Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create a silhouette chandelier illustration in Illustrator. Before we get started on creating a chandelier, let's have a look and see what it is that we're going to do. This is a silhouette chandelier that I've created and we're going to build ours up in a similar way. I have a background layer that just has the fill on it and then I have a layer that just has the center piece of the chandelier on it and then all the other pieces are on a layer by themselves. The reason for this is it allows us to build up the middle piece and half the chandelier and then just flip it so that we have the second half. So now you've seen how it's all put together, let's go and see how we would create our own silhouette chandelier. We're going to start the chandelier in just a regular Illustrator document. I've created a square document, you could create yours however big you want it to be. I'm going to choose View Rulers and then Show Rulers because I want to drag in a ruler here. I'm going to use this ruler as a guide for lining up the middle of my chandelier. That's all I'm doing it for. I'm going to add a couple more layers so that I have all my layers preset. I'm going to use layer 1 here as the middle of the chandelier, layer 2 as the background and layer 3 as the sides. So let's have a go at doing the middle of the chandelier first. So on this layer I'm going to start with just a circle. I'm just going to draw a circle here and I want it to snap in position. If it doesn't snap into position it's easy for me to move it later as you'll see. I don't want any fill here, well I actually I want a black fill so I'm going to turn off the white fill and then just flip these two colors so there's my first shape. I'm going to add a second circle and this one's going to be just a bit bigger than the last so again I'm just going to make my circle and now I'm just going to move it in so it snaps into position over the top of this one. And then I'm going to build in an oval and again just drawing out the oval and then pressing V for the selection tool and just move it into position here. I'm going to create a sort of floral shape next. So I'm going to start with a circle and then I'm going to duplicate this two more times. So I'm going to press Control C to copy it, then Shift Control V twice to paste two more copies into position with the selection tool I'm just going to move these out so that I can create the shape that is behind here. So what I'm interested in is this shape without the two circles. So I'm just going to take this circular shape and let's see where these pieces are. This is this piece so it's at the front of the top of the layer stack and this one is below it. So I can select these two and then I'm just going to use the Pathfinder tool and I'm going to select minus front because that's going to remove the front piece from this circle and then I'm going to do the same with the second half of it just checking to make sure that the piece that I want to cut out is at the front. It's not, it's actually at the back. So this time I'm going to use minus back instead because all I want to be left with is this approximate shape. Now I haven't done the world's best job at doing that so probably you'll want your shape to be a little bit more accurate than mine but let's just size it and I'm just going to drag it into position and it's just going to sit here on the chandelier. And now we'll go back to our oval tool I'm going to drag out a really long oval here but I want it to have pointy ends. To get pointy ends I'm going to click on the direct selection tool, click on this anchor and just click on this convert tool. What that does is to turn the curved ends into pointy ends and since this is a bit wide I'm just going to narrow it a bit and just drag it into position. And now we need a bulb at the end and again we could get that with the circle tool. Dragging that into position then I want this again upside down. So I'm just going to hold Alt as I drag a duplicate of this away, flip it upside down and put it in position. So basically what I'm doing is building a fancy shape here using all sorts of tools. Here I'm going to choose a rounded rectangle, hold shift so I draw a square. 
and now I'm just going to rotate it so it's a sort of diamond shape and again put that in for position. You can just build it up using all sorts of bits and pieces. This next bit and piece is actually fairly critical because we're going to use this over and over again. So I'm going to make sure that I draw it out correctly before I start. Here is my circle and I'm just going to choose Effect, Distort and Transform and then Transform. And I want two copies of this. I want to preview it so I can see what I'm doing. I want to move it in a vertical direction and I want it to get smaller as we go. So I'm going to start with 75% and just see how that looks. It actually looks pretty good. So let's just increase the vertical distance until we get what we want. And now we want a sort of teardrop shape for the bottom of this. So again, I'm going to select the oval and just draw out an oval. Select the direct selection tool, click on this top point and convert it. And that creates this sort of teardrop shape that we can then just drag to create the exact teardrop shape that we want. And now I'm just going to place it here. Now these shapes here, I want to make sure that they're all neatly aligned. So I'm going to choose Window Align and I want to make sure that they're aligned to the center. So I'm going to firstly make sure that I'm aligned to my own selection and then I'm going to choose Horizontal Align Center and that just makes sure that they're aligned centrally. Now I want to use this piece over and over again so I'm going to choose Window and then Symbols and I want to drag this into the Symbols Library so that I have it as a symbol that I can use in future. And now let's just go and place it in position here. Now I'm a bit running out of my artboard so let's just go and get these shapes and move them up a bit. And again this time let's choose Align to Artboard and let's make sure that all of these are centered nicely. Now my guide is out but I'm not too worried about that. I'm just going to actually turn it off as long as they're centered to each other. That's all I need. You can see I could have done a better job with these floral shapes but let's just call that good for now. So now that I've got my centerpiece in place we're ready to go ahead and start building the other bits of the chandelier. Now the rest of the chandelier is going to be built up. We're just going to build up half of it on this layer up here. So I'm going to start by creating my candles. So I'm going to drag out two different shaped or different size ellipses here. And I'm going to put the bigger one on top of the smaller one because it's this little bit that I want. So I'm going to select these two and I'm going to choose minus front because that removes the bigger ellipse from the smaller ellipse which is giving me the start of my candle. I'm going to select the rounded rectangle tool and just drag out a rounded rectangle and then just move it into position. I want to take the top off this shape a bit so I'm going to go again for my ellipse tool drag out a fairly sizable sort of ellipse because I just want this little bit of a curve here. Again with the selection tool I'm going to select these two pieces and again minus front to get rid of the oval from the rectangle. I can join these two pieces together by selecting them and choose Unite. And now for the flame I'm just going to drag out a small oval Again with the direct selection tool I'm going to target this topmost point and click this convert anchor point to make it into a sort of teardrop. And now let's just move it down into position over the top of the candelabra. I'm going to select all of them and just unite them into a single shape. And now I can size it to where I want it to be size wise. And I want two of these so I'm just going to alt drag a second one away from the first. Now these are going to be held together with some lines or some sort of curves. So I'm going to grab my pen tool. I'm just going to drag down here to start the curve and then up here to finish it. That's the first curve and now the second curve is just going to go into here. Now 
the curves are all going the wrong way, but I'm not too worried about that. Let's just flip the fill and stroke so that we get our actual lines. Let's go and get the direct selection tool and it's this handle that's causing us all the problems. So I'm just holding my mouse over the top of it then adding the Alt key, just checking to make sure I've got that little plus symbol appearing and then just drag to create this curvy shape. And now I'm going to increase the line of the strokes. I'm going to select the selection tool and let's just increase the stroke weight here. If I wanted to I could even choose a non-uniform profile to create a little bit more sort of visual interest, a little bit more of a calligraphic sort of look there. And again with the direct selection tool, the A tool, I'm just going to drag this a little bit closer into position so this really looks like it's anchored onto the central part of the chandelier. Now with the pen tool I just want to create some lines between this candle and this piece up here. So I'm just going to click here to start the line and I want it to start going in a sort of downwards direction and then I want it to sort of twist and roll upwards. So I'm just going to drag this line out. Now if it's not perfect to start off with I'm just going to click on the direct selection tool and then just make it the little curve that I want it to be. And now I'm going to add a second one here. So again grab the pen tool, click on this, drag downwards to start the loop and then click up here and drag to finish the loop. Again direct selection tool if I need to fine tune this to get the loop that I want. And now we're going to create some loops across the bottom here again with the pen tool. This is a really nice little exercise for the pen tool because it's not really the sort of thing that you can make a lot of mistakes with. It's going to be just fine. Again I want two loops but I'm going in the wrong direction here. I'm not too worried about that. It's going to click on the direct selection tool, place my mouse pointer over the handle, add the Alt key and just drag down to make sure I get my two loops. And let's just finish this one off here too. Now I'm going to do it all over again. So again with the pen tool let's click here to start it, drag down, click in here, drag down to head the way we want to go, ignoring the problem here and here just drag up. And again direct selection tool, let's go and fix the problems we've got. Click here, hold Alt as we drag on this handle. This point I can move the anchor wherever I want it to be. And here just make sure I've got this loop where I want it to appear. Now that I've got my lines in place we can go and create the elements or the pattern that we're going to use for these lines. Firstly I'm going to select this one here and I'm going to give it a dotted line. So I want my appearance panel. It's going to drag that into position here because we're going to use it quite a bit. I want a reasonable amount of stroke here. I'm actually going to take this up because this one's going to be more like a sort of chain so I'm going to make it eight points. And now we're going to make this into a dotted line so I'm going to open up my stroke panel, select the round cap, I'm going to select the dashed line and we always want a zero for our dash and for our gap we want more than the weight of the dot but not a lot more. So I'm going to select 12 and just see what that looks like. I think that's pretty good. Now I'm going to duplicate this and this time I'm going to make it pink just so that you can see what's going on. And here we're going to decrease the stroke a little bit so I'm going to bring it down to five points. And to get rid of the pink I'm going to set the opacity here to zero. And that's the beginning of a mask. The rest of the mask comes by selecting this shape and just clicking on opacity here and double clicking on knockout group. 
and now when I click away from the shape you'll see that we have this sort of dotted chain. Now I want to use this over and over again so I need my graphics styles panel so I'm just going to go and get graphics styles and now let's go and get the selection tool click on the line that has this style and just drag and drop it into here now that means I can click now on this line here and just apply the style to it just makes life a little bit easier now these lines here are a little bit different they're just going to be dotted lines so I'm selecting one of them and I'm just going to increase the stroke weight to four points and let's make it a dotted line click on round cap click on dashed line zero point to start off with and I think if we use about six points which is just a little bit bigger than the weight you'll see that we're getting this nice drop actually I think it's not enough so let's make it six points weight and eight point gap again because this is a style I want to reuse I'm just going to drag and drop it into the graphic styles panel click on this path and click on the style to apply it now earlier when I created this element down here I saved it as a symbol so I'm going to drag the symbol into the image now I want to edit this but I don't want to change this instance of it I just want to make a new instance so I'm going to break the link for this one so this is no longer linked to this this means that I can now shrink this down so I'm holding the shift key as I shrink it down to make a very small object out of this I want it even smaller now that I've created this I'm actually going to group it because it's not grouped yet and it's going to be a bit annoying if it's not I'm going to bring it into here and then start duplicating it by alt dragging a duplicate away and I want three of them here I want these two to have the same top border so again I'm going to make sure that I've got my align options here and I want to align the tops of these I'm just going to make sure that they're aligned and here I want to distribute them equally so I'm going to horizontally distribute the centers of them just to make sure that they're evenly spaced this one's a bit too high so I'm just going to click it and drop it down a little bit now I can grab all three of these group them and I'm going to make a duplicate of this again and drag it over here now that we've completed half of our chandelier we're pretty ready now to go ahead and create the other half I'm just going to move that little piece into position a bit better so now what I want to do is to select the whole of this layer because this layer is the one that contains all the chandelier pieces if I select the whole of this layer I can just reflect it object transform reflect and I'm going to reflect across the vertical and I want to make a copy so I'm going to click to make a copy and now with the selection tool I'm just going to drag on this shape to drag out the other half of the chandelier if I add the shift key as I drag it I'll make sure that when I drag it it goes perfectly horizontal now I have a script to finish this off that creates a rectangle the shape of the artboard so I'm just going to do that and drag it down into this bottom layer which is going to be my background I'm going to target it make sure I have the foreground color selected I'm just going to add a slight blue fill to the background so that we can complete this project so there we have the basics of creating a silhouette chandelier I started off by creating the middle piece on its own layer because this needed to be isolated because it's not going to be duplicated the rest of the chandelier was built up by doing half of it and then selecting it and reflecting it to create the other half so it would be identical reflection and then just adding a background behind it I'm Helen Bradley thank you for joining me for this video tutorial look out for more of my video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released and visit my website at projectwoman.com for more tips tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop Lightroom Illustrator 
and a whole lot more.